Well, especially given there's no increment, so there's no help coming. Right. This is like a this is a Wild West style affair. Well, and even though I'm not really sure how Rain would feel about being cast as the Sith Hikaru, this is some pretty good, some pretty good fan artwork here, right? Yeah, it's really, really well done. You see Rain here, you see Sardos, you see Kevin Bord, you see um, you see Chiyu. Uh, then there's Yoda. I'm not quite sure who Yoda is exactly, but um, the, there's Yoda here too. Um, and mm -hmm. uh, and it is it is chess wars, and we are ready to roll. I think Sardosh sending up his. Final prayers to the chess gods. Save your breath, Sardosh. I've been yes. praying to the chess gods for years. Look where it's gotten me. Mm -hmm. Viva la France. That's what. I, that's <laughs> all I'm gonna say. I bet everything on. I, I just bet everything on Sardosh. They better not let me down. Okay. Well, um, hey, Car, have you ever prayed to the chess gods? Did they answer your prayer and not mine? Is that what happened? Um. No. I mean, generally, I don't do that. I, I think the only thing I will say is that sometimes there are some superstitions I have. You know, I think I've noticed Sardosh has, has worn the same shirt, right? Yes. I think he's worn the same shirt during every match. So he does, I don't, maybe he just wears the same shirt every day. Cause I mean, we know there's a certain other uh, French speaking streamer who does that. So maybe, maybe, I mean, Sardis is trying to try, just, just trying to model after him, but I do think Sardis has worn the same shirt for every match. And I, I, we should ask him afterwards, especially if he wins, if that's the reason is cause he's, he's uh, he's superstitious. Now I was, A3 is a good move by, by rain. Now I think I'm kind of curious to see, will Sardis go back to E7 or will he go to A5? And I actually, in a way, I kind of prefer A5. I think it's a little bit easier um, to get the bishop to B6. It, it feels like the piece placement is pretty good for, for Black here. This is a nervous moment for Rain Wilson where he's, he's he's nearing two minutes taken on the clock and still hasn't played the only move. Uh-oh, he plays knight C5. It's still it's it's a good move. It's still a move, though. He can play the other order. I would have traded and then gone knight C5. He can still yeah. do it this way, too, though. And Sardosh with knight to B4. This is... Big moment. This could be the game right here if Rain doesn't solve this problem correctly, Hikaru. Absolutely, and I'm not surprised that Sardosh found it. It was it was a move that was sort of screaming to be played, and um, and now for Rain, he has to find which rook square to where to move his rook. Rookie two is actually a great move, by the way. Fantastic move. So Sardosh should should look to take advantage of the A file here, even something like Bishop B five. Mm -hmm. And offering the trade. That's one of the fastest ways to take advantage of disconnected pieces, but he plays nice C2. Is Does there Ray a five rook A4, A4 here? Four? Again, not so clear though, because black can take and go rook A2. It's still oh, it still is unclear. Point. So that and that's the other thing I would say is so I would feel like more at the intermediate level or beginner level, if there's an open file, I think actually having a rook against the Bishop and Knight generally is preferable. Um, because it's a lot easier to just use the one wow. rook versus coordinating the bishop and the knight. And now um, he sees it, and now oh, it this, gets spicy. This is going to get super spicy. Sardosh might even end up because at, at less experienced levels, everyone, even though the knight and bishop are objectively better, look mm -hmm. at what's happening. Rain is rain is not. It's, wait, it's, wait, he didn't play. Wait, what? Whoa, 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 what? Yeah, they're both just missing g four. It's hanging. What are they doing? What? G4 is hanging on the board. Oh my, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, what is going on here? Oh man, that was and now he now he almost is losing the pieces. I think Sardo just panicked. I honestly yeah. think Sardo just panicked there. He saw his clock was getting low and he just panicked. Yeah. Wow, he just missed but his I, winning opportunity. We didn't think we'd see Eval Bar swings like that, but now if Rain right. if Rain finds the plan of getting the knight in, then White should still be winning. But he's already missed it a few times. And in fact, here so you go hard. again. What I was King trying to three, say, Carl, is it's so much harder to coordinate the knight and bishop for less experienced players than mm -hmm. it is to play with the rook. And we're seeing that here. Even though Reign's better, he's not coordinating the minors the way, you know, a master would, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like, because you think about it, it's two for one. Yeah. And now you don't take the bishop on e1. It's important, just like... <gasps> he blundered his rook! Oh, my God! Oh, my gosh. Wow. If Sardosh had taken the pawn or given check, he might have come back and won that game. He panicked. You know, it was like Sardosh. I think it's just too much, too much in the way of nerves. He was defending for so long yep. that when he had the opportunity, just he eventually cracked under the pressure of the situation. So let, let's see, let's see. Um, I get, yeah, just knight takes pawn. Very rough, very rough for um for Sardosh. I mean, like he he. He really kept it together, but I think it was just the comb it was the pressure of being worse on the board and the pressure of the clock as well. And it's just it got to him. He just yep. he couldn't keep it together past a certain point. Um, and it was like right when he was back, it was right when it had turned around, the, the blunder occurred. 
Um, so I, you know, I think, I think it's just one of those things where I don't even know how you're supposed to look at it because he's done this twice now with the backwards night capture, yeah. but maybe there's just some way to just double, double check and see, I, I don't know, see where your night is or, or something. I'm not, I'm not really sure how, how he can do it, but the fact that it's not the first time is, is, um, is a bad sign. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and he, he had gotten himself in a position where the Rook was, was flexing on the Knight and Bishop and rain. Mm-hmm. You know, we talked about Sardosh missing the opportunity, but you know, rain was going backwards with the pieces and the right. Knight and Bishop were not doing what they were supposed to. So really exactly. unfortunate to yeah. see Sardosh miss the, the night capture and unless rain mm-hmm. pulls a, unless rain pulls a stalemate here. Oh my God. When he played Queen D5 for a second, I thought he did. <laughs> oh man. Look at the Sardosh. Oh man. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, I mean, I mean, we all we all we all knew it was a good it was a good job yesterday. That's all I'm gonna say. Rain's approach in general is he just kind of wants to get to the middle game. He's not into the opening stuff, so that's why most of my opening advice mm-hmm. is how not to lose. Um, not, is he gonna not, play not the hippopotamus here? But, is, he gonna, is he gonna play the hippopotamus with e six and ninety seven ninety seven? Oh wow! This <laughs> this is the thing Rain loves, but this is gonna this could get him in big trouble. And I think this might have been what Kevin was coaching Sardosh on. Like, look. Mm-hmm. If he gives you the center, take it and don't apologize. Right. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, I mean, pretty pretty balanced position. White has much more space in the center of the board. It's it's very hard to play here um, for both sides, I feel like, because neither side really has a clear break. Um, black can't play E5 like Black normally does. Uh, F5 is probably too dubious because of Knight G5. So it's going to be interesting to see um, how rain how rain reacts here oh, it's wow. also gonna be really important that sardosh keeps it together though he's really got to stay focused um and i think not fall too far behind on the clock so i think the clock is really what hurt him the most in the first game this is a pawn that while it looks good could end up being a disaster for rain exactly i mean again i think for Sar- sardosh plays queenie too great move as long as Sardos keeps it together here and he doesn't doesn't panic and, and freak out too much he still is has a very good chance to win this game yeah, the risk of d5, Rain might play d5, but the risk is then the dark squares are mm-hmm. problematic and you've got new problems. Again, it's anyone's game, though, I feel like. I, I feel yeah. like the, 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 uh, the weakness of the Black King here gives Sardosh good chances regardless. Even though, even though objectively it was a bad move. Uh, oh, he's got rook c6. He's got rook c6. Okay, rook, rook c6, c6. Huge move. Rook c6. Will he it also cuts it? off rook the queen from b5, move. by the way, which is officially a threat for Black. Yeah, rook c6 is a huge move. Will he find it? If he finds rook wow. c6, I think he's going to win this game. What a move. This is what? it. Will Sardos play rook takes? He does. Nice. nice. We're, I think we're, head, over, I think we're headed way. to overtime. Oh, what is that? Oh, huge no. Blunder. What is that by Rain? Yeah. Oh, well, now Rain just loses. Rook takes rook, and you just... Re- oh, and now you resign, Down as piece. Mr. Shabba would say. Now you just resign. So but This was super yeah. tough for... It was super tough for Rain because of how Sardosh played it. I mean, honestly, he kept the pressure. Mm-hmm. Rook C1 wasn't as good as Knight D2, but in hindsight, the idea was just as strong, and, and he's going to take this. Wow. Yeah, you know, I was going to say that um, a lot of credit goes to Sardosh. He kept it together. Like, you could tell he was really frustrated when he hung that pawn on C4. Um, there, there were a lot of movements and ge- gesticulations and all those other things, but he kept it together, and he didn't completely lose it, and he still right. made moves, logical moves, didn't spend too much time, um, and he's going he's gonna to win this game now, I think. Well, and we called it then. We said that's going to be a pawn that he's happy is gone. Look at the C file. It's winning him the game. Mm-hmm. Now queen e5, if he sees queen e5, yep, yep, and that's all she wrote. Yes. Very nice finish. He got nervous there for like Allez. a second. I mean, if, if Rain had gone Allez. king e8, I don't know what would have happened. Oh, yeah. But yeah, yeah, he's going he's gonna to win now. Especially because, as Allez. I said before, it's a bishop. Pas de blunder, pas de blunder, pas de blunder. Yeah. I don't think he's speaking English or French. He's speaking... Aye, aye, aye. <laughs> yeah, the good thing is that it's a bishop. It's a, it's a bishop, so a bishop can only attack on, you know, the dark dark colored tiles, and therefore uh, there's no chance of, of, of Sardosh not winning here. It's like 99.99% guaranteed he will win. So we're going to head to uh, to Blitz. going to be Blitz overtime, where I think Sardosh has to be the favorite. Um, mm-hmm. I believe there it does matter who gets who gets white, and I believe Sardosh will get white. I think it is decided by rating, but we'll confirm that, so... Mm-hmm. Um, 
Wow. Yeah, there, there's just no way. Because I, as I've noticed, if you get a bishop, that's the one end game where your tricks, even even if even in the consolation bracket, if you end up with like a rook against a bishop, the bishop just does not attack. You can only attack on one color of square. So it's it's yeah. not it's it's not you just you can't create threats with a bishop. So there, there's well, just no way that Sardosh doesn't win. As Sardosh cleans this up, I'll uh, I'll clean up what was a discussion for the community. Just so you know, the donations were coming in so fast that the animation fell behind the bar. So just so you know, a lot <laughs> of, of the donations flashing now that that we already sh shot out and I and I gave a shout out to you before. You were not being ignored. Just you guys got way ahead of the animation, so um so it took a while to catch up. But again, uh, thank you to everyone, and I think we're gonna have overtime. So en passant, right on cue. There's en passant, and then check me on Wally check me on B7. Yep. But the the I bar is accurate in real time. Just so you know, the bar is accurate mm -hmm. for donations. Just like uh, a, it takes yeah. a Frenchman to not miss on not win uh, miss en passant. Right, of course. Allez, yes. on est encore dedans. Yeah. Allez, superbe, mm. superbe. Okay, I think Sardosh is probably gonna go right back to it with some kind of improvement from Kevin, if I had to guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. All right, so here we go. Now, once again, this is 5 0. So it's, it's, and, and the other thing I would say is I suspect that, uh, that Sardosh has not played much Blitz because his rating is 1004, whereas Rain is 1385. But, but then again, Rain is 1385. Is that based on a significant, significant amount of games or just like one or two is also? It's only true. based on one or two. In his, in his main account, he's about 1150. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Um, okay. He's, you All know right, what that's so based see. on? It's based on basically whatever Armageddon games he's had here in this event, um, which he's won mm -hmm. every tiebreaker. Right, that's true. Yep. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so Bishop E2. Will Sardosh go D4 is a big question mark, too. Yeah, D4 is he a strong doesn't. move. Or I think yeah, it's at D4 least an irritating one. Seven. Right. Yeah, Bishop E7, completely reasonable so far. I will say I think this this opening it's a little bit favorable to black because I feel like yeah. white's ideas are not so obvious here. If white doesn't play d4 and force open this diagonal, like if white goes d3, I think black's moves are a little bit easier with like rookie eight and bishop f8. Pretty dicey already for rain. Down a minute on the clock. Yeah. Um, well, especially given there's no increment, so there's no help coming. Right. This is like a this is a wild west style affair, especially when you were just playing a bunch of increment. It's hard to make that mm -hmm. adjustment, but at the same time. Both of these guys have had tiebreakers, and right. for Sardosh, it took a tiebreaker to get here, you know, so um, we know that they know what's in store. Right, so now will Rain finally play D4? The last moment that he can play D4, will he do it? Will he do it? If he doesn't, Sardosh goes D4, and you open up the long diagonal, okay. and you excavate the knight on F3 and the pawn on G2. Yeah, this okay, so key. he does go D4. Good move. Yeah, this, if Rain doesn't play 95 here, I think he's probably okay. going to lose. Okay, he does. But he's had two moments like that where he had to find D4, yeah. had to find 95, and he found them both times. Mm -hmm. But, again, two minutes on the clock. 94. Good move, move by Sardosh. Sardosh. Yeah, I, I mean, I think for Rain, this is, this is really hard to play because the bishop on b2 is bad. Black yep. has the obvious lever with f6 to remove that knight from e5. Um, and the queen and the bishop also are on c7 and d6, which are lined up very neatly here. Yep. So I want to see if Sardosh finds f6 here, which is a very good Yeah, move. f6 or even c3 first are both really good, but I think f6 is mm -hmm. just kind of, you know, yeah. I don't, I don't want to say obvious, but when you just move the knight, it's got to be on his, on his agenda, and indeed Sardosh finds it. This guy... Right. This guy has just gotten so good over this last month, and he's playing this blitz game like a boss. Yeah, it's 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 really weird. It's like when Sardosh doesn't have time to think when yeah, he, he doesn't let his, his like mind like start to you know mess with his confidence. And he just plays free flowing chess. He plays a lot better, and I think that's actually true of a lot of people. The less time they have to think and start like being insecure and worrying about this or that, the the better they play when they just can't think. It's just like they just move. Right. You just play the game. You don't let your brain like disturb you and 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 mess up everything. Well, now Rain is really getting down on the clock, and this is probably going to be mm -hmm. the story. Not not even just because of the clock, but he's also much worse on the board. So it would take a blunder right. by Sardosh probably to give Rain chances. Yeah, C three here is very strong. I think C three and Knight G five, but oh, Knight D five. Oh no, he blundered. Oh, wow. oh. Does Rain see it? Knight D five. Rain is getting low on time. One minute on the clock. He found it. 
Oh, this boy. is his last chance. It's going to come down to the wire. But now King... Oh, he put a 32 minute block! Oh, my God! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Yes! Yes! Yeah! Yeah! Oh, oh, my oh, God! Man. Well, if he won King yes! H1, I think he would have. I mean, please, he would have had good please, chances to win because the please, whole position. Oh my God, he had come please, all the way back. Please. Perhaps the most epic and wild ending you could ask for in an overtime tiebreaker, a surprise checkmate. But before we get into that, good news for you both. Community rally got us over fifty thousand dollars. So matched with a hundred thousand by Chess.com, we have a hundred and fifty thousand dollars going to charity. And a lot of it was driven on this last day. So amazing, awesome. amazing stuff. Thank you guys. And tell us more just about, you know, how much you enjoyed playing the event, your your, you know, how much you love chess and you know, how was this experience playing in Pog Champs? This event sucked. <laughs> chess sucks. France sucks. <laughs> 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 no, man. Uh, this is a lot of fun, man. It was uh, listen, I'm an old I'm an old dude, and I was for a little while on the high school chess team. I wasn't very good, um, but to to get to dive in and re-examine the game in a fresh way was a lot of fun, and um, really excited for the money that we made uh, for our nonprofit Sardosh. If you want to donate any of your winnings over to our charity, <laughs> you're welcome, my friend. Um, and played some great players along the way. Had a great experience, and. Um, Thrilled to be a part of it, and just big congratulations to Sardosh on his victory. Excellent. Excellent. Sardosh, uh, same question to you. Just tell us uh, your final thoughts on playing in Pog Champs, and uh, and where where you're going from here with your with your chess career. Um, first of all, out of all my esports career, I played some great League of Legends tournaments. I played some great Twitch rivals and many games, but out of everything, that that was the win I was the most happy with. Like. I, I, I will actually fade out when I win, win this game. It's, it was too much to handle. I never felt something like this. This, this, this it, it has been like two months. I'm literally discovering the game and getting obsessed with it. And I play like maybe 12 hours a day for like two months. So I'm I'm doing four, four hours of puzzle. You can make like, like it. I, I, I went to 2100 and, and like I play six hours of the game every day. Just sometimes never get out of my bed and play on my phone. Uh, that was something I really was focused on. So I'm so proud I won it. And I know I will chill a bit. I will I will focus on other things. I will play a bit of Rocket League and stuff like this. But I will never forget chess and play it until I get at least 2000 hours sometimes. And I mean, who can say I eat 2000 hours some, someday in my life? I, I think that will be a, a really good life goal and i will definitely aim for it at some point yeah <laughs> and play on the board by the way it would be awesome yeah i don't think i've ever done anything for 12 hours a day so that's pretty incredible and you earned it man <laughs> well, thank you guys awesome. both so much and again thank you to the community who came through in the clutch and got us over that hundred fifty thousand dollars raised marker and and uh, the two largest percentages going to Rain and Sardosh's uh, charities respectively. But remember, all of the participants get a percentage to the charities that they chose, which is incredible. So guys, what a wild ride. Thank you so much for doing this. Congratulations to you both. Congrats, Sardosh, and uh, maybe a future Pog Champs, and we'll see you then. Here we go. <laughs> what a what a Pog Champs way to end it with a 92 surprise checkmate on the board, Icarus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, I mean, it was a great finish. It sort of, that game swung back and forth. The whole match swung back and forth the way that he took it so seriously and then to come through, win that second game, then win the tiebreaker. Um, it was just really, really special. So Sardosh, the, the hard work paid off and an incredible and deserving Pog Champs champion there.